Hello everybody, what is going on? I hope you are having a wonderful day so far. My name is Elliot, this is The Fragrance Well. Welcome back everybody. Welcome to the new viewers and welcome back to the continuous viewers. Today's topic of discussion, we are going to be talking about delicious fragrances. Fragrances that smell delicious, smell like something you would like to eat or drink. In other words, gourmand fragrances. That's right, we're talking about gourmand fragrances today. I got 10 of them. Some to me are more gourmand than others, but they all give off at least a semblance of something that I could either eat or drink. We're gonna talk about them right now. Okay guys, let's get right into it. The first one is coming from the house of Emporio Armani. This is Strong With You, Absolutely. Stronger with you, absolutely. What you're gonna get with this one, you're gonna get sweetness, you're gonna get some booziness, a little bit of warm spice, and primarily features the edible note of chestnut. This one features rum, elemi resin, bergamot, divana, lavender, maron glace, I think I'm saying that right, cedarwood, bourbon vanilla, and patchouli. So you definitely get the rum off of the top with this one. There's also some citrus to kind of brighten it up a bit. Very warm, very sweet. Like I said, a, a, light, a little bit of spice. That Maron Glace Accord is actually a uh, candy chestnut. You definitely get that type of vibe in here. You get a little bit of a nuttiness. You definitely get a lot of sweetness. There's also some vanilla. When I wear this, I actually get a very prominent kind of chocolatey Accord once I get, you know, kind of like an hour or two into the dry down. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody else mention that. I might have. I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I'm a, I'm a late one on the train in terms of actually owning it but I really enjoy that when it comes out. There is patchouli in this. It's probably coming from that and the combination of some of the other things that are going on with this fragrance. That being said, there's no doubt that this fragrance is delicious. It smells very yummy. Uh, a good one to check out if you're into gourmands. Once again, Stronger With You Absolutely from Emporio Armani. Okay, so next up, we got one coming from the house of Salvatore Ferragamo. This is Womo. Salvatore Ferragamo Womo. What you're gonna get with this one is kind of a coffee-like vibe, primarily a tiramisu dessert type of vibe. Very sweet, very delicious fragrance. This one features cardamom, bergamot, black pepper, tiramisu, ambrox, orange blossom, tonka bean, cashmere wood, and sandalwood. So designer fragrances have not been skimping on doing gourmand type fragrances uh, these days, but gourmands of this style is definitely not the popular style of gourmand coming out these days. I love the way the tiramisu note smells in this. Uh, I am actually was never a big fan of tiramisu as a dessert. I do like it more now because it is kind of a coffee-centered style uh, dessert. And since I like coffee now more than I did when I was younger, uh, that's a dessert I don't mind having. I think this captures that essence very well. Very people-pleasing, lasts a long time. A popular fragrance of old from the house of Sabatoi Ferragamo. They have moved on from this style of fragrance now with the new Ferragamo lines, kind of prim primarily focusing on leather. But it's good that you can still pick this one up. Once again, this is Womo from Sabatoi Ferragamo. Okay, so this next one is coming from the house of Victor and Rolf. This is Spice Bomb Extreme. Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb Extreme. Now, I do have to say, I don't fully consider this a gourmand fragrance. I think it's gourmand light, if you will. It does have delicious notes and, and accords in it, but I think most people don't necessarily consider this a gourmand fragrance. They would consider it sweet and spicy. This one features black pepper, pimento, grapefruit, cinnamon, cumin, saffron, vanilla, amber, tobacco, and cistus. All right, so if I don't fully consider this a gourmand fragrance, why did I put it into this list? I would say it's probably the least gourmand out of this list if I were going to rank them based on that. But what I can say is when I smell this, I can kind of paint a picture of my head of what it maybe could smell like, more so towards the dry down than off the top. Uh, when it dries down, to, for whatever reason, it kind of reminds me of like a whipped cream with a lot of vanilla and a lot of spices drizzled over it. Not a lot of people may not necessarily agree with me with that, but I do get that picture in my head once this dries down and the spices calm down a little bit and the vanilla starts to come a lot more forward. So once again, this is Spice Bomb Extreme from Victor and Rolf, slightly gourmand. All right, and we're moving on. So from now on, I think the stuff that comes forth is not only delicious, but also in some way could possibly be considered gourmand. So for this next one, it's coming from the house of Hugo Boss. This is the scent 
Absolute. Hugo Boss, the scent Absolute. The scent fragrances are all about maninka fruit. Featured notes in this are ginger, maninka fruit, mondia root, and vetiver. So maninka fruit is not something I think I can readily smell. I might be wrong about that. I might have to take a look, but I did look up what it smells like and the description does match what I think I'm smelling from this. It comes off cross as kind of like a cocoa powderiness uh, type of fruit with uh, strawberries dipped in it or something like that. So I do kind of pick up on like strawberries kind of dipped in maybe a cocoa powder and then the ginger just adds a little bit of spice to this. So it does paint a picture of food in my mind when I smell this one. Might not necessarily be the most photorealistic thing on this list, but I do think it has a delicious quality to it and I actually really enjoy wearing this. Most people might think of uh, the Scent Private Accord before they think about this one. I do have that one as well, but honestly this one paints that picture in my mind more than that one does. So once again, this is the Scent Absolute from Hugo Boss. All right, and so this next one is going to be coming from the house of Frappon. This is 1270. Frappon 1270. First of all, I just have to say I love the bottles. I love this insignia on the back. Hopefully you guys can see that nice and clearly. Yeah, but what you're gonna get from this fragrance here is dried fruits and sweetness. This one features candied bitter orange peel, prune, hazelnut, raisin, cocoa, tonka bean, coffee, spices, immortelle, Grape Blossom, Pepper, Linden Tree, Gayak Wood, Precious Woods, Vanilla, and White Honey. And so like I said, this one, dried fruits. You pretty much get that right away. Uh, you definitely get the sweetness pr primarily with that White Honey. That White Honey Accord is gorgeous, especially when this fragrance dries down. There's not a boozy accord in here, but I almost get kind of a boozy vibe from this, or I almost feel like this would be something that would be served on like an hors d'oeuvre platter, if you will, where it's just dried fruits and like honey on the side or something like that. And it would be served kind of in like a fancy cigar, cognac and cigar lounge. Unlike a lot of the other gourmand fragrances on this list, this one actually sits very close to the skin, which is probably the biggest drawback with a lot of these Frappon fragrances, but you can't deny they are good quality fragrances and this one definitely doesn't disappoint in that department, at least not to me. 1270 from Frappon. Okay, and moving on, now we're starting to get into the big leagues. Coming from the house of Tom Ford, this is Bitter Peach. Tom Ford Bitter Peach. Uh, if I have to explain to you what this mostly smells like, I don't really know what to say. All about peach in this one, I also get a little bit of a boozy vibe from this. This one features wild peach, blood orange, cardamom, heliotrope, rum, cognac, divana, jasmine, sandalwood, tonka bean, vanilla, benzoin, cashmere, patchouli, labdanum, and styrax. Obviously, you're gonna get the peach from this. It's very fruity, kind of citric, and very boozy. Yeah, I get a lot of booze off of this. Um, interestingly enough, some people don't really pick up on the booziness of this. I thought that was kind of weird because when I smell it, I get it immediately. It smells like a drunken peach. And that's pretty much the main thing I can say about this one. It definitely comes off as a delicious, kind of sensual, kind of sexy fragrance. Some guys might consider this to be a little too feminine for them. I can understand that. I think it does wear well on a man by itself, but like the fragrances in the private blend line, this one is really made to be layered with other stuff. So maybe layer it with something that kind of gives you a little bit more of an edge to it. Layer it with something maybe a little more smoky, something nutty, who knows, uh, use your imagination. Bitter Peach from Tom Ford. All right, and moving on, this next one's coming from the house of Arabian Oud. This is Risala, Arabian Oud Risala. Very popular fragrance from this house and an absolutely stunning bottle, if I do say so myself. This one features saffron, rose, vanilla, oud, and chocolate. This one pretty much smells exactly like what is listed on the note breakdown. It is definitely the trifecta, the saffron, rose, and oud. The saffron can be a little bit screechy off the top, so to me, the first 10 to 15 minutes of this might be a little rough, but once that kind of settles down, you get the rose and the oud, and when that chocolate starts to come out, ah, this fragrance is just delicious from that point on. That's really the only thing in this fragrance that gives you any, any semblance of food. It's just pure chocolate, that's it. So, you know, just think of chocolate in its kind of most basic form. Definitely delicious off of the skin once that chocolate really comes out and the fragrance is well into the dry down. Once again, this is Rasala from Arabian Oud. All right, and so for this next one, let's get a classic fragrance from the house of Guerlain in here. This is L'Instant de Guerlain Eau de Parfum. L'Instant de Guerlain Eau de Parfum. This one, 
This fragrance is stunning. Very delicious fragrance. Very warm and spicy and also calming. This one features star anise, citrus notes, elemi resin, patchouli blossom, jasmine, neroli, cocoa, patchouli, cedar, sandalwood, hibiscus seed, and tea. The best way I can describe this fragrance and what it reminds me of is going to be chai tea. Chai tea being a very spicy and warm tea, very warming and cozy kind of tea. It's not something I necessarily like to drink, that's more so my wife's department uh, with that kind of a tea, but I do love the way it smells and I love the way this smells. I also get some chocolatey like accords in this, like with the cocoa and the patchouli kind of blending together, so it gives it another added warmth and sweetness to it, but this fragrance is absolutely delicious and stunning and does last a long time as well. L'Instant de Guerlain Eau de Parfum from the House of Guerlain. All right, and moving on, these next two I think are going to be the most gourmand fragrances out of this list in my opinion. This next one is definitely no stranger to being popular, probably the most popular gourmand niche fragrance on the market right now, Angel Share from By Killian. Angel Share from By Killian. This one you get sweetness, you get warmth, you get spiciness, and you get booziness, and also a little bit of nuttiness. There's a lot of nut accords in here. This features hazelnut, cinnamon, cognac, praline, tonka bean, vanilla, oak wood, and sandalwood. This one here just smells like sweet, candied nuts drizzled in a lot of cognac, and it's just a beautiful fragrance. I mean, it's popular for a reason. It's not necessarily a rich or syrupy or balsamic fragrance, but the hazelnut and the praline just give this kind of creamy nuttiness off the top, and it just makes it smell so delicious. All I can think of with this fragrance is kind of a sweet dessert-like cognac drink that I would love to have in cold weather. Angel Share from By Killian. All right, and last but not least, this one's coming from the house of Nabatis Parfums. This is Divine Aphrodisiac. Nabatis Parfums, Divine Aphrodisiac. I would call this the most gourmand fragrance on this list, almost to the point where if you really don't like gourmands, this one might not really do anything for you. But this one here is sweet, it's creamy, it's nutty, and very buttery as well. This one features bitter almond, Indian sesame, cinnamon, peanut butter, orris butter, coffee, praline, and vetiver. The most interesting thing about this fragrance is definitely that peanut butter accord. That is definitely not an accord that is used in fragrances very often. I don't know if it's ever been used before, could have been, who knows, but you definitely pick it up right off the top. The best way I can describe this, I don't even know if it's something that actually exists, but if there was a such thing as a high-end super luxury peanut butter and jelly sandwich, that's what I would describe this as. I don't know if that is or ever would be a thing, but that's the picture that comes into my mind when I smell this. Once again, this is Divine Aphrodisiac from Novitas Parfums. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. That was 10 delicious fragrances. I should have ranked them probably, but I didn't, so it is what it is. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. Don't forget to like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you like the comment, and feel free to share if you think someone else will enjoy this content and leave a comment down below. What are some of your favorite fragrances that come across as delicious to you and remind you of something you could eat or drink? Have a great day and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well.